Hi, my friends, and welcome. This is my review of the brand new Ghostbusters 2016. I saw it in XD, 3D, the equivalent of IMAX and regular theaters. This was Cinemark, so I got to see it as big and loud and large as you can in a Cinemark theater. Was I excited to see this film? You know what? I'll be honest with you. Yes. Did I have some hang-ups? Was I worried a little bit? Of course. Was I someone that didn't like the initial teaser trailer? Yes. But I don't believe that you should judge a book by its cover. You should see the movie for itself, judge the movie on a whole, and if the movie sucks, then it sucks. But you saw it. You didn't just see a little bitty trailer that sucked, or I wouldn't say sucked, just didn't understand Ghostbusters. But I still had some excitement for this film because of who was behind the camera and who was in front of the camera. Paul Figg has made many comedies with women and has been successful at least three times. Bridesmaids, Spy, and The Heat. So when it was announced that he was finally going to direct this film after so many years of would there be Ghostbusters 3 and then I think officially when sadly Harold Ramis died, that was officially that, okay, it's over. They're just going to now make this um, new version with women. And I have to say, when I heard who was going to be the cast, I was very excited. So, yeah, Paul Figg, great director, great comedic director, understands comedy, understands women. So I wasn't really that mad that this movie was going to come to life. Great cast. I love Christian Wig. I love Melissa McCarthy. Just finished Gilmore Girls a few months ago. Love her. Kate McKenna is Probably one of the shiner moments on SNL, and I'm fine with Les, um, uh, Leslie Jones. I'm fine with her. I don't particularly think she's that funny. She really just yells a lot, and maybe that's funny, but she's all right. I can stand her. I'm glad she's a part of the cast. The trailers came out. We also saw that we had Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth was going to be a part of the cast, and I would have to say the trailers weren't that interesting. But I try to look past that and go, I'm going to see the movie officially, and then I will have an official opinion of what I've just witnessed. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the critics are saying right now. I don't know what my friends are saying right now. I'm going to wait until I actually get my opinion out right now. I do have, I knew, I know one person's opinion, my friend who went with me tonight to see it. I got to talk to him about the movie. But other than that, I don't know what anybody else is saying about this film. I don't know if people hate it just because they want to hate it or they love it because it surprised them, or if they just tolerate it. How did I feel about this brand new version? I liked it. I thought it was decent. I could tolerate it. If it didn't exist, I'd be fine. Now that it does exist, I'm fine with it. If it's successful, would I like to see sequels? Sure, okay. They set up sequels in the film, but of course the movie doesn't rely on setting up those sequels. I appreciate what this movie actually is, and I really can't say much about what it actually is, because I don't want to spoil anything, because I really had no idea. You know, we always heard rumors of who was going to be in it, who wasn't going to be in it, who were they going to play, we don't know. How does this tie in with the original universe, we don't know. So once I got used to what was going on in, on screen and realized what it was, I was like, okay, the purest me is upset, but I can't really be upset. I really can't be that upset, at least the purest in me. Now, I could be upset if things didn't really pay off or you know, upset that maybe that didn't work, but the purest in me is a little upset, but... I can't really rely on that because of what the movie attempts to do and succeeds about 70% of the time. I just not that mad about what I've witnessed. I'm fine with it. I didn't love the film. I didn't hate the film. I have mixed feelings about the movie. So I would say that I'm kind of in between uh, really like and just like or almost like. So I'm kind of in the middle between really like and kind of like. I'm right kind of in the middle. I don't know how to explain it that well. Because there are things that bothered me like oh how 
technology, the you know the the technology, the science. You know, it's of course it's not real science, and I don't even understand real science sometimes. But when there were some things that were brought up, or how things work, or what things are done, I was like, okay, I got to put those to the side because of what the movie is. It's not. Well, I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who has seen this film. I don't want to spoil who we actually else get to see in the movie. Of course, if you want to, you can go on the internet or maybe watch a review that's going to spoil everything for you and uh, tell you everything that's about this movie before you even see it. Now, I'm fine. If you see the movie and you don't like it and you want everything spoiled for you, you find a review that does that, fine. If you enjoy the movie and you want to do the same, fine. But I want to try and explain my feelings about this movie without spoiling a damn thing. Chris and Wig, she's good in the movie. I liked her. Melissa McCarthy... Good in the movie. I liked her. Kate McKenna, uh, I liked her, but I felt with those three women, there's a lot of parts in the movie where they set up a joke and I don't think it really paid off. Leslie Jones is fine. She does a lot of yelling, but she's also uh, kind of funny at the same time. It did crack up a little bit. I didn't laugh a lot with this movie. I didn't, you know, go crazy when I uh, was witnessing this film. I didn't really just lose control. I did not lose control watching this film. I wish it would have happened. I wish I would have fell on the floor laughing, hysterical. That didn't happen. There were moments where I did chuckle. I did laugh. But there's lots of times where it wasn't cringeworthy or offensive. But it just was like, you know, that wasn't... That didn't hit me in the gut and go, oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Not None of that stuff kind of happened. Or maybe, maybe, maybe once. I don't know. Turns out my favorite character in the film was Chris Hemsworth. He plays this receptionist to them, and he's in, he's he is what he is in the film. Don't want to say because you know don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I have felt like he was my favorite character in the whole film, though everybody else is fine in the movie. You know there are some supporting characters in the film that I feel are a little wasted or weird, but I do appreciate that this movie tries to be different. Sometimes it succeeds at being different, other times it 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 doesn't. But that's okay. The visuals are my favorite aspect of the entire film. The 3D, I saw it in 3D and XD, the sound was great, the visuals, the 3D, the colors, lots of beautiful colors, the ghost and all that stuff looks really cool. Little nods to uh, certain things, pretty damn cool. Not going to say because I don't want to spoil. Um, so I liked all that. And what I really appreciate about that, and it was my favorite part of the whole film, every time there was a ghost scene or they were fiddling around with their guns and their laser beams and whatever they call them, I don't. I want to point out that I'm a fan, and I love Ghostbusters. I love Ghostbusters too. I would never consider myself a super fan, like I know all the technology, but I do believe that Ghostbusters is a masterpiece, a comedic masterpiece. Ghostbusters two is a good, solid sequel, and this film is a decent film. This new one is a decent film. I would like to see more. We'll see what happens with the box office, but I would tell you what I loved the most about this movie was just how it looked. It looked great. I think uh, interaction between character was was great so Paul Figg did a great job at directing this film I, I think he really understands women I wish the film was funnier than than it was for me maybe for you it'll be a lot more hilarious me it was it was fine it was fine but the visuals was so great and then my favorite aspect the entire film and the reason I would recommend you see this movie in XD 3d or an IMAX is since the movie is presented in 2.34 aspect ratio or 2.4 40 aspect ratio most of the movie is got the black lines here and the black lines right here. When all the action happens and there's lots of great special effects and all that kind of stuff, it creeps over the black lines. The laser beams and all that stuff creeps over the black lines, ghosts fly by, and they fly around the whole entire screen. Incredible. I love that aspect of the thing. It was my favorite moment of the entire piece and why I would recommend this movie. Good film. Decent film. I don't know if I'll watch it again, but I would be welcoming of more. If it does make money, we might see more. We'll have to see. But in the end, not a disaster, not a train wreck, as probably most people might think, or most people expected. But for me, I thought it was a good, decent movie. And for that, I'm going to give Ghostbusters 2016 in 3D, I'm going to give it a slight three stars out of four. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and share this video. And also, please check out these amazing movie websites. And if you enjoyed this review, please click here to subscribe to my channel. And also, please check out all my recent reviews right here on YouTube. Have a great day. Live film. Find peace, happiness, and harmony in anything and everything you do. 
and I'll talk to you at my next movie review.